Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get a pizza as big as your table across the Bad Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes Blackpool. Hello, welcome to TTP, Temporal Talk Podcast. I am joined by the Scottish stud, John Dugan. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, yeah. Today's special guest, we've got um, Black Country Beast. Uh, we've got Lee with us. Hello. <laughs> now, I was just saying before we came on that I've always wanted to kind of have somebody in our profession come on the podcast because it's a, it's a really unsung job that you do, you know, it's a job that doesn't really get talked about that much yeah 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 well that's, I think that was that was one of the big things when I first got into it is like you know you didn't know where you didn't know where people got their gear from you know it was like people just turn up with it and then you know it's only when you sort of get into it that you you, you know you realize it's quite I mean it is I mean even still now it's quite niche you know even though it's there's a lot there's a lot of gear makers it's still a, quite a niche um a niche job really there's not you know when you tell people what that what you do they kind of go oh wow no, you know I, i've never heard of that before or i've never mm. i've never known anyone who's done that before so yeah um i suppose it is quite a quite a unique job really i suppose and, and how did you get into it because you currently had a full-time job and then you recently left your job was it well so- yeah um i'm actually gonna be i'm actually looking for a job at the moment um with this, with kind of like balancing now 50 50. Um, the problem is with working on my own, it's um, it's getting the jobs in, you know, getting them done. Uh, like, because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't rush, you know, I, I take my time, I, I make sure that everything is quite, you know, is top quality before it goes out. So obviously that takes a lot of time. So, you know, I do one job, you get paid for that, but that job could take, you know, a week, two weeks, you know, and then. Yeah you're not you're not getting anything you know what i mean you're not because because of how long it takes if i was just throwing gear out you know one after the other you know throwing them through yeah. one after the other it would work a bit more but I, I am actually sort of 50 50 in it now you know and trying to trying to get trying to get a balance really you know so that, that that's um that's where i am at the moment with it but yeah i have i mean i've been doing it sort of pretty much full time now though for a good few months because i've been made redundant so i've been you know why not while i'm while i'm while i'm off trying to catch up not that you can ever catch up but you know mm-hmm. <laughs> try <laughs> uh how much input are you given when it comes to making the gear in, how much am, am, am i given how much input am i given yeah it depends, it depends on the job um some people you know they've got a, a professional design that's been done by a, a designer you know it's very specific it's you know it's as in the drawing, you know, so, and with that, I suppose the input you get from those jobs is more fabric because obviously it's a drawing. Yeah. You know, then it's then for you, it's then my job to sort of give, you know, give links to my supplier and say, you know, what fabric do you, you know, because obviously yellow could be anything. It could be shiny. It could be metallic. It could be, you know, it could be anything. It could be leather. It could be well, fake leather. It could be anything. Um, so you get those jobs where it's like a professional designer has, has done it. Um, and then you get the jobs where it's more of a sketch. So it's the rest of themselves as a sketch something out, you know, um, uh, and that then I can sort of interpret where things, you know, where the, where placements are going to be and stuff. And the jobs where people, you know, say, I don't really know what I want, you know. Um, so then I'm quite happy to draw something up or, you know, cause I, I'm, I'm pretty good on Photoshop and, Mm. I've done some design work and stuff before, so um, if someone's got an idea, I can I can you know normally knock it up and go back and forward a little bit, you know, and um, eventually we'll come up with something. But sometimes you you literally get like uh, a scrap of paper with a 
you know, the stick man on it, you know, and, and kind of arrows pointing and like green and red, you know. And then you get you do, and then you get the funny ones where someone says, you know, um, I want a pair of trunks and it's got to have stars. You know, you think, well, okay, <laughs> where, 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 you know, where, where are the stars? You know, and then you have a bit of back and forward, and eventually you get it. But it, it really just depends. I quite like, I quite like having a hand in the design, but I also like the professional design done because then I know exactly, I know exactly what I've got to do. You know, and I can do it to, you know, to the exact drawer in there, and there's no confusion. So, yeah. Well, it, we'll we'll talk about some of the people that you've designed for. But before we discuss that, how did you actually get into making costumes? Because, I mean, was you always a designer or was you a rest of a war hand? Like, how was that? How did it well, come about? It's, a, it's a, well, quite interesting, actually. I actually got into this um, with speaking to Pete Dunn. Because um, Pete, Pete's, um, he's married to my niece. So um, we were talking one day um, at mum my mother-in-law's we was you know just a Sunday afternoon you know we were, we were chatting and uh my mother-in-law came out with a pair of trousers and she went can you take these home and, and take them up they're, they're too long because I've I, I sort of dabbled on a sewing machine and you know I've made a few costumes for my son for you know for comic con and stuff like that so she knew I could use a sewing machine and then sort of just Pete sort of said oh you know I didn't know you could sew have you ever thought about making yeah you know and I thought, well, no, not, you know, you, that's not something you, you think of, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm an IT major, you know, it's not something you normally think of. So, um, and we just talked about it all afternoon, you know, and we talked about, um, you know, the people who do it and what people expect, you know, and what people want and all that. And we, we talked all afternoon and when I, when I got back home, I started drawing up patterns for trunks, for a pair of trunks. So I just started sort of guessing. Guess, guessing basically at the beginning I mean you know there's no other way of saying it it was just working it out you know I thought yeah. what's the easiest, what's the easiest thing I can start with and I thought well trunks they're the smallest things I thought that's going to be the easiest that's going to be the easiest thing you can uh you can start with so I started making some trunks and I sent out a couple of samples to um Tyler and Ben Mustache Mountain just to try on just to say do these fit you know and they'd, they'd come back and say, well, now they're a bit baggy here or they're a bit tight. And, you know, and eventually we worked it out um, that I got a solid pattern. So I got like, I got four sizes of trunk pattern all done and they worked. And then I made them a pair for one of their, ma one of their early matches. Um, and they wore them like on WWE. And it was the first mm -hmm. thing I'd ever made was worn straight on WWE so oh, wow. and it just and obviously from then <laughs> you know <laughs> here I am today so it, yeah it's a bit of a weird one really I got into it so <laughs> yeah. so from the people that I know I know you've done Pete Dunn, Trent Seven, Tyler Bates, our good friend RP Davis from Blackpool, uh, Jordan yeah. Devlin, Eddie Dennis um, I mean you've done quite a number of uh, big stars in NXT and, and in WWE. Yeah yeah um I seem to, uh, yeah, I, I get more and more WWE now, which is which is really good, and especially since I've been doing the kick pads because I tried to do the kick pads the, like the Japanese style. Um, cause as far as I'm as far as I'm aware, I think I'm the only one who does kick pads like that in this country. Uh, mm -hmm. I might be wrong if I, if I'm wrong about that. I, I apologize, but as far as I know, um, my style of kick pads is, is the closest to the Japanese the Japanese kick pads. Which um, is what like Pete. I know Pete wears them, and Eddie Dennis he wears them. Um, so yeah, I mean it's weird now to get WWE sort of like messaging me and saying, oh, "I love your work. Can you, <laughs> can you know?" Normally you try to you, when you start, you're sort of chasing, you know, you're chasing WWE. You know, oh, can I make you something? Can I make you something? You know, and, but now to have them sort of going the other way around, and uh, I mean, I've, I've got some WWE. Some WWE gear here, which I can't say anything about because <laughs> it's all hush hush, so it's all hidden away over the back there. But yeah, that's a new and someone new, uh, new. And I've just sent another, um, another guy, but I can't say that either. So yeah, so yeah, WWE's kind of uh, getting more and more, which is pretty cool, especially yeah. when you see them, when you see it on the, you know, when you watch it and you know, you, you see 
there and you think man that's 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 crazy you know <laughs> you know so is there any when when you make wwe um outfits is there any rules of anything you're not allowed to do with them or is there is there like a criteria you've got to meet or is it just it's whatever they whatever they want basically i always i always say to it to anyone i mean my my work's consistent across the board anyway you know it doesn't i don't it doesn't matter to me whether you, you you're just you know you're just starting to learn wrestling just training or you wwe you know my i will make my gear is my gear you know there's no there's no kind of like deluxe version and then a base you know a, um yeah uh, um, sort of like a basic version, you know, it's it's standard across the board. Um, but no, no, there's no criteria. It's whatever, whatever they want, you know. At the end of the day, that's I kind of pride myself on being able to do exactly what someone wants. You know, I'll make it happen. You know, you know, and how crazy it is, or how difficult it is, or how long it's going to take. Um, you know, I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll make it happen. It's like I mean, I had a. An outfit. I don't know if you saw on my Instagram. It was all the cogs and the bones. Mm. If you ever saw that one, I mean, that was just ridiculous. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the amount the amount of individual parts I had to cut for that was just you know. But I thought no, you know, I, I always no, I don't care how long it takes. <laughs> you know, mm. it takes me three weeks of solid just cutting cogs and cogs and little tiny cogs and screws and I mean, even had to cut these little screws out and everything and you know. I'll do it, you know. So th th there isn't really a, any any kind of criteria, really. It's whatever they want, you know. So, is there like a base? Are you only? Is there certain materials that you can't use that you've got to try and replicate, or is it you can use anything? Yeah, uh, materials. Yeah, that's 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 the kind of that's probably the area where you really have to um, where you really have to work with with the wrestler, you know, the customer, mm -hmm. because. Someone might have an idea in their head. I want this to be this material, but everything basically with, with wrestling gear, everything's got to stretch. So your 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 gear has to basically be spandex. You know the base the base layer of any gear. You know has to be spandex, unless it's um, like a coat or you know a jacket or someone wants a uh, trousers or jeans. You know or something like that. That's that that's fair enough. But they have to be aware that that's not going to stretch, kind of thing. But yeah, as long as your base layer is is a spandex, then the designs, depending on how big they are, you, you've got to leave enough room to stretch, basically. So if it's just small designs, you can do them out of anything. You know, you can do them out of a vinyl, out of a faux leather, out of fur. You know, it, you know, you can do anything. I mean, some of the gear I've done for Pete, so I had fur on it. When I don't know if you saw the gear that I made for uh, Matt Riddle and Pete when they were broserweights. And I made them their the outfits. They both had fur on because it's such a small amount. You can get away with it. You know, you can get away with that with with, with the way it moves. Um, it's just it's just working with them, basically. It's, you know, if they say, "I want you know wrapped around leather," it's probably not going to work. You know, because there's mm. going to be no give. So one one bend, you know, one bend, one you know, one wrong move, and it's just going to it's just going to tear apart. So. It's just working, working within the boundaries, really. You, you, it's quite and spandex. I mean, the um, the spandex that um, I, um, oops, sorry, the spandex that I use is really good quality. I, I don't use any. I never use cheap. You know, it comes from comes from one of the best, the biggest, well, the, the, yeah, the biggest supplier in the UK. So mm. it's kind of you can pretty much use anything, and I've used a lot of weird and wonderful. I mean, I've even used cat collars in gear. So, you know, <laughs> I've even had to buy a bulk, bulk, load, bulk load of cat collars, you know, for something. So, you know, it's it's kind of like they, they tell me what they want and then it's my job to figure it out how, we, how to make that work. So that's basically the, <laughs> the answer to that. <laughs> With the profession you're in, is, you said, I mean, is there many around the UK and is it quite a competitive market or do you all friends you call you know what's the kind of scene you know across the uk um yeah there's no i've not i've not had any rivalry i think there's that much work that i don't think it's possible to 
you know, for it to be like a battle, you know, I mean, right. I, I mean, I, I, I know myself, I am inundated with orders. I mean, I have been for three years. I've never once, I've never once not had 30 orders, 20, 30 orders, you know, at any one time, you know, so, and I know, for, you know, I speak to other gear makers and, you know, we all sort of, you know, like each other's things and comment on each other's things. And I think they, they say the same, they're absolutely snowed under. So, I, I, you know, I don't think there's any, mm. and I think once you've got, once you've got, you've done a good job for someone, you know, they'll kind of stick with you then. So, you know, there's, 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 there's wrestlers that will work. with someone else and that's fine you know the way it is you know so i think there's that much work uh i mean i get i mean i get orders from all over the world so um i mean i've had i've had you know every country you can think of i've sent gear to so i, I don't i just don't think there's there's a, a lack of work you know for anybody i think you know you could have endless makers and i think it'd still all be you'd still all have a lot of work and i think it does come down to that the time of it the fact that everything you take so you know i mean if you like you say if you could knock out you know a pair of tights or a singlet in a in a couple of hours then i think people would start struggling then you know with with a bit more sort of rivalry you know but yeah. i think because the way that the, the job works the, the, i don't think anyone's ever going to run out of uh, out of work so what's the uh longest something's took you to make was it that not some bolts one that was probably one of the longest yeah um i think i mean a job i, I don't know a job can go up to three weeks you know and that's working a couple of hours a couple of hours a night you know weekends mm -hmm. everything it'll take you know two or three weeks for me it's um like laying down all the designs, getting all the designs, because everything you cut has got to be stitched down. That's where that that's where the time takes. So if you've got 60, 70, 80 individual parts, they've all got to be stitched on, you know. They've all got to be stitched round, everything, you know, you can't leave nothing unstitched, otherwise it'll just come off. You know, as soon as you stretch it, it'll just come off. So everything has to be stitched. Um you also get jobs where someone will say, I want, I want five pair pairs of trunks, you know. All the same in different colours, and obviously then that that takes your workload. Um, yeah. You know, it takes your workload quite quite long. Um, but yeah, the nuts and bolts one was definitely it was definitely a difficult one. The coats, some of the coats I've done, they can take a long time because you've actually got to make the coat for starters. You've been, you know, they're not. Uh, I've I've done some. I've had some coats where people send me the coat, and I just add. I had bits on, but majority of my coats have all been made from scratch. Wow. Like Pete's coat, they, they're all made from, you know, they're all made from scratch. You know, uh, you can't buy Pete's coat because um, cool. the fur I the fur I use in that is is like really, you know, it, it comes from one of the best sort, you know, uh, suppliers of of, folk, of like fake fur you can get. So coats can take a little bit of time, and the and the kick pads, kick pads are quite. They, they can be quite time consuming, uh, mm. even just basic ones, because there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of steps in kick pads that you don't see, you know, that you that you, that you wouldn't see on a finished on a finished product. Um, a lot of like what, what I always call behind the scenes, you know, like a lot of behind the scenes work, you know, dealing, shaping the foam and sanding and heating the foam and you know and all this kind of stuff and prepping the foam and you know there's all kinds of different glues and different stitching and you know uh, all sorts of you know you have to tell compared to everything everything has to be done you know it, it, there's a there's a lot of steps with them so kick pads can be quite quite long especially if you've got then if you add designs on them as well they, that takes it even longer and longer so yeah but the cogs one was definitely uh was definitely uh pushed me to my limits definitely so. <laughs> are you um are you a born wrestling fan Am um, I what, sorry? A uh, wrestling fan. I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm into the wrestling now. I used to be into it really big when I was, when I was at school. Uh, I used okay. to go when, like, when the rock and 
and all that were in were we used to have our eyebrows and draw the row and you know used to do all, you, you used to do all that um but then it kind of you know things things get in the way you know obviously when you, you know um i try to keep up with it now but in sort of work home the workshop and working here and you know it's kind of like um i can't i, I watch it um as, as and when i can and i yeah we all enjoy it. we all enjoy it now, and my son my son loves it obviously because you know it's pee he's pee by you know he gets excited about that and obviously um, Tyler and Trent because they were my first ever customers so mm. he's like you know I'll always give them my full attention but yeah I watch it as much as I, as much as I possibly can and um, it's kind of reignite you know me and Pete and getting into this has reignited that kind of you know that kind of joy that we used to get out of it, you know, when I was at school, so. Is there a, um, a wrestling outfit from past or present that you really like the, the look of? Um, to me, I, just not, I wouldn't say there's one in yeah, particular, but I, I like, um, my, my, my favorite ones are really elaborate, you know, when someone goes, Full on, you know, um, elaborate kind of stuff. That that's the kind of thing I I think if you're going to do it, do it. You know, um, anything with a nice intricate logo, anything with a big bold um, bold designs. You know, when someone really goes, mm. I know it. Like even when they ask me and they send me a drawing, and I think yes, you know, that that's all. You know, that's the that's you know. I think if you're going to do it, do it. I wouldn't say there was anything. In, um, I like, um, I mean, I've liked what uh, Trent and Tyler always come up with because they, I love the snake and the, the, the foil and the big moustache and, you know, I, that, I always <laughs> like, I think they always go really um, all out, you know, and I like mm. that, you know, someone, um, I like anything really themed as well. So, you know, um, you've got a primate and, um, you know, those kind of thing. I like working with like fur and and fake leather and straps and buckles and you know and all that kind of stuff. When, and I like I like gear when you can rip it up as well. You know when people, you know you can tear it and it just looks, you know. I like that kind of thing. I like a I like I, I like a good show outfit if you know what I mean. So mm. anyone who's anyone who's got a really you know when they come out you can say wow you know that looks awesome you know so yeah. But I would say, I mean Trent and Tyler. I like I love their. I love their gear. I think I'm going to pick Trent and Tyler's gear as always. I know I'm, I'm yeah. biased. I made it, but it's their <laughs> it's their idea. So you know, <laughs> yeah. I think it always looks really cool. If anyone uses anything sort of snake and, and um, foil, you know, and really shiny, you know, and I think it just looks cool. So, is there anyone that you would like to design for that you haven't yet? Well, I've been hassling the the living day, I'd say, of The Rock. Because <laughs> apparently he's coming, he's going to come back, isn't he? Um, mm. Was it Wrestle, is it WrestleMania he's coming back for? Well, there's rumours all over the shop. What, what's, um, the, what, what's the rumour with him? Well, because Roman Reigns is head of the table, or claiming that spot, The Rock is going to come back and say that he's the head of the Samoan family, yeah. which would be amazing. I'd love to see that. Where it's going to happen, yeah. I don't know, but... Well, that's it. And I, I tweet him, I Instagram him, I Instagram his wife, his manager, his, <laughs> his daughter. I, I, I even put it out on my Instagram. Every, I think I put it on Twitter. Everyone annoy the rock as much as keep <laughs> just bombard him until, until I can make his until I can make his gear. Um, I even offered him a I even offered him a charity thing. I said, "Well, mate, I'll make yours. I'll make another pair. We'll auction that, and the money will go to charity." You know, guys, uh, come on, but no, nothing, nothing. But I would nothing love yet. To, uh, <laughs> nothing yet. Nothing yet. I'm wait. I keep waiting for that. You know, that message to pop up on my Twitter or my Instagram, but it's not. It's not yet. And he hasn't even read them. You know, it's like oh, I, I, I think I, I suspect he doesn't even look at his own uh, his own socials. To be honest, he's probably got somebody who does that for him, hasn't he? But I do keep bombarding. I even I even designed him a whole new set of gear and and. In Photoshop, and I sent him that, and I said, "Look, yeah, this is like you know, this is my idea kind of thing, and still nothing." So, 
Well, you so seem to have you... quite a lot of um, you seem to have quite a lot of contacts. So hopefully, well, can... yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah I, I've mentioned to a couple of the WWE lads. If you haven't bumped into him, you know, just give him a nudge. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> and uh, even his daughter, because his daughter's started, his daughter's get yeah, wrestling yeah. today, doesn't she? Or she's getting. I even sort of started uh, harassing her to say, uh, "Have a word for your dad." You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if you notice Lee has gone has changed rooms it's because we were talking about The Rock and he got a bit overexcited <laughs> and the signal went <laughs> there we go too much talking of The Rock broke my phone but yeah I mean you have enough contact so I think you could potentially get The Rock's attention soon surely I mean it's not I'm, I'm definitely trying <laughs> I'm doing all I can, apart from like going find him. And uh, if I find out he's ever in the country, I'm, I, I might have to uh, go full stalker and, and go find him. I think. <laughs> so. Well, would you ever watch um, Tyler Bates and Pete Dunn at NXT UK at some of the shows? Do what? Sorry. Would you ever watch? You know, go to one of their shows, uh, the NXT uh, well, Takeover. I did watch them. Um, I watched them at. Uh, well, I watched. Uh, Trent and Tyler at Download. It was a Download there, is that? Yeah, um, yeah, it would be. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely go, yeah. Um, um, I mean, when all the travel's back to normal and the world's making sense again, then uh, obviously we'll, 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 we'll end up probably doing a visit anyway because we haven't seen my niece or Pete for a while. So it would be nice to time it right. Because yeah. so then you could bump into like, you know, Triple H or some kind of yeah. big, you know, big wigs. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. I mean, um, I know Pete. Um, Pete obviously deals very closely with Triple H, so yeah, um, it would be nice to sort of go and you know have some face to face, and you never know where that could lead, do you? So <laughs> it would be quite nice. But yeah, I mean, hope like I say when the world's back to normal, then we, we'll probably be heading down to florida anyway and mm. and then leave, time it right so i might you know get to watch it and maybe go backstage who knows <laughs> yeah. so you're good friends with pete dunn has he ever give you any wrestling training or kind of put you through the ropes <laughs> no, no i have um i have really really bad sciatica as if you saw on my instagram not a while ago that i was uh, in hospital twice with it <laughs> so wow. i don't think it, i don't think it would be the best idea for me to <laughs> okay. start wrestling uh um i i mean I, I started learning i was starting doing bouldering climbing and uh, that's what set my back off uh which maybe crippled me i had to have two ambulances out so <laughs> I, think I'd, I think if, if that's happened from climbing i think <laughs> I don't think we should probably start with it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I'll probably uh, never, probably wouldn't never walk again if I if I started to wrestle. Um, but I think if it was been I don't know twenty years ago, then yeah, I would definitely be uh, be interested in having a few tips. Yeah. <laughs> so you said that you made a few costumes for your son for Comic Con. Yeah. What, what kind of stuff did you make for him? Um, I've made him. A I made him a Deadpool costume, which was quite cool because that was the first time I'd used foam, um, like painting and doing foam, uh, which is quite cool. And doing the guns and the swords and everything was quite good, quite good fun. Um, I made him um, Splatoon. Do you know that game, Splatoon? You ever saw that? Yeah. yeah. I, I made him a full Splatoon outfit with all paint on it and a big, like, massive paint roller, a huge paint roller. <laughs> uh, that, that was quite cool. And then... Um, where I made him a Jon Snow from Game of Thrones, like right. a, full, a full Jon Snow outfit with the fur coat and uh, you know the, boot, the boots and the sword and you know and everything. And that uh, that was quite cool as well. Um, those are like the three the three sort of costumes that uh, worked on for a long a long time. And I've, the reason uh, um, the reason I ask is because John is the maker of our group of friends. We went as the three faces of Mick Foley to Comic Con to see Mick Foley, and we saw Al Snell, Booker T, and John. Honestly, he can make it seems like mm -hmm. he, anything Halloween based or Comic Con, John is straight on it. Ah, there you go. Like, well, yeah, get him on, get him on the gear. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's, you know, that's all it is. Isn't it? It's all costumes at the end of the day. Yeah, 
You are quite good at it, to be fair. You talking to me or John? <laughs> well, well, John, but... <laughs> um, yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Get on the gear. You know, that's, that's you know, so I started. <laughs> yeah. How, what's the best thing to start with if that's what you're going to do? Trunks. I, I, I mean, I can only go by my own experience um, is that I started with trunks. So um, I think they're not, I mean, they're not, they're not, easy you still got to make them fit you know they're still mm. got to work but i think it's because it's the least amount of fabric that you're working yeah. with so you know that's that's why i would that's why i started with them um because everyone's everyone sort of always says like oh well, you know you were talking to pete about it but you didn't make pete's gear for ages you know i said Cause, yeah well because a singlet is there's a lot more to a singlet yeah than there is a pair of trunks you know uh, a singlet can go horribly wrong <laughs> you know you know mm. you can you can really go horribly wrong on a singlet so which is why trunks was my was trunks was my go-to uh go -to John, first. Um, yeah, trunks uh tights 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 are quite good quite quite uh they, they take a bit more thinking about tights but mm. overall you know as long as you've got all your measurements right tights so you know they're, they're they're quite a good they're quite a good one to to go with um you just got to be prepared with like because with 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 tights each piece there's two pieces each piece has a middle a front and a back on each piece so you've got half of the back a side and half of the front on each piece so you just as long as you you know you get your head around that you know you can kind of tights tights are good and, and I think I like doing tights because you've got a lot of room yeah there's a, a lot more space to, on tights you know trunks you're kind of limited with what you can put on you know, because you've only got so much space, but tights are quite good. Um, coats, coats are difficult, and and kick pads and knee pads. If you don't, do, if you don't get them right, you, you know they can be quite. There's quite a lot involved in them. Mm. So, what's your favourite to make and design? Um, I do like I, I do like doing the coats, mm. the entrance coats. I think because you, you know you can really go to town on an entrance coat. You know, you're not limited by fabric, you know, because it's not got a stretch. So yeah. you can literally do anything on a coat. You know, you can put anything on there. Um, so I do, I do like doing coats. I like doing kick pads now. Now, I've, now I've nailed this, this new, this new, you know, this new technique, this new Japanese sort of style. I do like doing, I do like doing kick pads, even though there's a lot to them. It's quite, it's quite, it's because it's because you literally make with with kick pads that you make them the same every time you know there's no there's no deviating off with them you know with cutting this off or you know making that bit you know kick pads are kick pads so i quite like the i quite like the the, the plan on there but um as far as gear i'd probably say i'd like doing tights i think um because you've got a lot of room you got a lot yeah. of room. you can put a, you can put a lot on them you know you can you can really get you can really go you know, you can really go a lap, full on elaborate with, with tights. You know, I've actually got an idea for a pair of tights because I was going to get um, a stall at um, the next Comic Con. I was actually going to get a store, my own store, and make okay. make gear there so people can come and see. And you know, and um, if there was wrestling on, I know someone um, I was going to discuss about making someone's gear, wearing it, and then we auction it off at the end, kind of thing. You know. Mm. Um, so they can see the process. I still will do that when it, when you know, when the world's a bit more normal. Um, but uh, I like making tights, and I've got a really good idea, you know, which would like I could work on them the whole weekend, you know, and really, and then probably auction them off after, you know, uh, raise some money, charity or whatever. So yeah. Have you ever made a costume or anything that's had a, a malfunction on TV or had any problems? Um, yeah, I've not had touched wood. I've not had a malfunction on TV or or during any filming because I, I mean I always make sure I get my gear out to the person well in advance, you know, mm. so they can try it on. Is there any, is there any problems? I mean, yeah, the, 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 you have the odd little problem every now and then. Um, mostly the problems you get are sizing. Now that that, but that can be down because obviously I have to rely on the measurements that I'm given. So, 
you know, I can't measure everybody personally, obviously, you know, from all over the country and all over the world. So I have to send out uh, the measurements and then I have to work on whatever I get back. Mm. And occasionally, obviously, if someone hasn't measured right or, you know, they'll try them on, they don't fit, you know. <laughs> so, but that, that that's one of them things and I'm happy to work that out, you know, we'll send them back, we'll sort it, you know what I mean? And, you know, if there's some people as well, they'll like, I'll send them a sample. Um, look, I'll just make a, I'll just make a simple pair. Like if they want tights, I'll just make a black, like a, the cheapest fabric I can find, send them out. I'll try them on. I'll say, yeah, they fit. So I know then I've got to work on that pattern, you know, mm. or they might say, no, they're a bit long or they're a bit baggy around the waist. And I say, right, okay, I know then what to adjust. But um, yeah, I mean, this, you know, you get the odd little, you get the odd little issue. Um, I've had issues with fabric where the fabric I've bought has not been what, what I was promised. And you don't really realise it until someone wears it, and then it, you know, it can rip or. Um, but I'm quite thorough with before I send anything out, um, and I'm, I, you know, you just got to be prepared that when you send something out, that potentially might be a problem. You just got to do, you just got to deal with it. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't blame anyone. You know, it's if it, if, you know, if it's just someone else's fault, it's, it's not a big deal. I don't blame anyone. I'm not one of those people who are going to kick off, you know, and start moaning, you know, oh, I'm not, I'm not fixing that. It's your fault kind of thing. Uh, yeah. I don't work like that. So, you know, we deal with them. I think I've only ever really had one, one awkward customer, I'd say. I won't name any names, but, um, and that was completely not, nothing to do with me, but, you know, they wouldn't have it and it ended up, ended up with a just blocking basically and ignoring because it was but that's i've only ever had one 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 altercation let's say you know what I mean? yeah. So yeah. everyone's put all i think you've got to expect it with custom stuff especially when you're not measuring them yourself um you got to be you got to expect that not everyone knows how to measure themselves you know so mm. you know is, I, it, I accept... is it harder to make female costumes just yeah, with... um, for me, for me, I I prefer to make men's. I'll, I'll, you know, I do make. I have made some female gear. Um, there's, there's a lot more measuring needed with with female gear. Um, yeah, men are pretty. Men are pretty. You know, <laughs> they're pretty straight. You know, and you know, there's not. You know, I mean, obviously, you get obviously different sizes people and you know, skinny people and muscly people. But all in all, men men are kind of. They're easy to measure, <laughs> you know. You know, yeah. I mean? um, women women's gear has got. A, 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 I know there's brilliant people out there who do women's gear, so I don't really get many requests for women's gear um, okay. because there's, there's there's well-known people out there who do brilliant women's gear. You know, mm -hmm. fantastic women's gear, and I and I'm, I'm happy as well sometimes to just to pass women's gear off to say go and speak to so and so you yeah. know that'll do a better job of it than i will you know i mean i can do it i can do women's gear you know but i prefer to do men's gear i'm kind of com it's come kind of comfortable doing doing men's gear so um, yeah, yeah. And i think that's because i've, I've always I, the majority of my like initial jobs was all men you know and then you get the odd you know you get the odd woman's gear sort of dotted in um but yeah, I'm more comfortable around doing men doing men's gear. To be honest, have you ever made masks? I made um, yeah, I've made, I've made two masks actually. One, one I never seen it, you know, anywhere. I don't know what happened, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, you get that a lot with a lot of gear. You know, you can send something off and you never see it. You know, you never hear from the person that you sent it to. You know, but I did one mask and that was. It was, a, it was a foam mask covered in uh, like a fake leather and it had all designs on it and a strap and that, you know, took, you know, it was a lot of work and I, I never saw anything of it, which was a shame. And I made one recently, I don't know whether you saw that, it was like, um, it had like teeth and, but it was more like just, it was kind of more straps, just, it wasn't yeah. like a full, it was like, you know, like kind of straps tied, yeah. around, tied yeah. around at different angles. I've never made like a proper, or what you would call a pro you know, a proper, wrestling mask you know a, 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 what you would expect you know when you when you say wrestling mask you get an idea in your head of what they look like yeah uh, i would like to i would like to do that um, john made the you know the classic mankind strap 
Um, yeah. But what did you make it out of, John? <laughs> um, so I went around charity shops and bought uh, women's leather handbags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. That's it. You gotta, you gotta use whatever you can. Sometimes, you know. Yeah. It looks you really know. good, though. Like the yeah. end product. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's the perfect. That's perfect because it's already sewn up. It's already, it's, it's already yeah. good to go, isn't it? You know. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, like I say, you know, I've used cat collars. You know. <laughs> you, yeah. You've never, you would never have known there were cat collars, but there's cat collars yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Um, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta go like B and Q. And you know you go like Sainsbury's or Asda's for, for stuff to make gear. You know you you know you gotta. I think wrestling gear it's kind of uh, it's very outside the box. You know with uh, <laughs> with materials is, and is is your family quite hands on? Like your missus and you know your your son. Do they help you? Or do they just leave you to it? Um, um they uh, yeah, I can't, they kind of leave me to it. You know. Um, my son, I, try, I keep telling him he's going to learn soon, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's not overly keen at the moment. You know, <laughs> uh, he does like making stuff though. He'll, he'll come down and he'll make himself something with all the scraps that I've got left over. You know, he'll sort of come down and make himself, um, you know, a, something to go around his head or a sword or something. You know, and then he'll just disappear, and that'll be it then for a month. Yeah. You know. Yeah. until you've got some interesting foam that you've left you know left over or some fur that you don't want and he, he has a spark of idea but uh, my wife does her own sort of craft stuff she does like these these button pictures and these no, like these no, pictures that are button like button family pictures and people's names and stuff okay. she does that uh, every now and then so but no i'm um I'm, I'm pretty much a solo you know everything is all on me which is a uh, it's good in one way, but in another way, it's like you wish you did have some help sometimes, you know, so you get through the orders because what I hate is just leaving people hanging for, you know, months and months. And that happens, you know, and it's I hate doing that, you know, and I know people want gear and I have to keep saying, oh, I'm getting to you, I'm getting to you, you know, but I, I, I can't rush anyone else. I can't rush someone's gear to make someone else's gear, you know, it's just not. That's, that's not how I do it, you know, so, you know, people just have to wait or although they can go somewhere else, you know, that's fine. I've got no, I've got no problem, you know, if mm. I've left waiting and they, you know, they want to go off and go find someone else, that's fine. You know, that, that's, I don't completely understand. You know, so. <laughs> With your name, uh, Black Country Beast, uh, yeah. how quick did you come up with that name? Well, that, 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 that was actually, that actually is, was, a, started off as a joke. So I used to do bodybuilding. Um, oh, I was training. I was training for UK BFF, the uh, bodybuilding competition. I was training for that, mm. and I used to call myself the Black Country Beast. You know, <laughs> just just as a joke. You know, I, it wasn't. No, I, I wasn't being serious. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's to come in and say I, I'm the Black Country Beast. You know, because <laughs> I was like, you know, training for bodybuilding and that. And I and then I said, if I ever get my own business, and I said I'm going to call it Black Country Beast. I said, yeah, well, I, I didn't even know then it could have been anything, and I could have been doing any business. But I said, yeah. I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it Black Country Beast. So I don't care. Whatever I do, I'm going to call it Black Country Beast. So when I started doing this, and I had to think of a name. It was just you know, it's going to be Black Country Beast. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I swore I'd do it, and uh, I saw it. Yeah, so that's where it come from. Really, it's just me, me being a bit of an idiot, really. <laughs> I think it's good. That. Because it mm. makes you stand out, doesn't it? It's, and I, yeah, uh, I, think, I think it works really well for this. For this, I think yeah, I think it works really well for this um, this this type of business. You know, I think it. I think that's quite... So, I've seen that you sell merchandise on your website. Yeah, yeah. Right. Is that your designs are on that? Have you drawn them yourself? Uh, no, the the current design is. I mean, the ones that are just so say like Black Country Beats. The, mm. those are obviously just you know just me just text that i've typed but the actual logo i had that made um i can't remember who made that now um but i just sort of you know found somebody on instagram who i like their i like their their artwork mm. um i mean like i said i mean I, I i'm i can design up to a point but that logo was like really you know it's a bit sort of outside of my because uh, the original lo the original logo which was like the sort of bodybuilding man with the with the bull's head Right. Like I just I just knocked that one up just to get me started, you know, to sort of get something on the, on Instagram and get something on Twitter. But 
the main logo I had that I actually paid for that to be designed. And uh, right. I mean, I think you probably nailed it for me. I wanted to, I wanted the Kraken in there, the monster. I wanted like the old Viking ship and uh, the Black Country flags in there. You know, mm. so I just like that kind of Vikingy kind of you know um, look. That's the kind of you know I like that kind of thing. You know, that rustic kind of old old kind of Norse looking yeah. at you know kind of thing like which is why I quite like this t-shirt you know because uh, <laughs> with the axes and that you know that's kind of my I think if I was going to be a wrestler I think that would be my character I'd want to be some kind of viking or you know or something <laughs> like that you know <laughs> and we've just finished watching vikings so uh, yeah. Yeah. the viking theme is very yeah I, I quite like that <laughs> so the next 12 months for you what are you planning you know what's the next 12 months looking like for you um catching up catching up catching on my up. orders would be not would be nice yeah. <laughs> and not have any injuries um for me it's just seeing how far i can go with it really um i want to develop the youtube i've, I've done a, obviously i've done some youtube videos with tutorials and stuff mm. i'd like to, I, I really want i'm really keen to get that going a bit more but it's time it's just time, you know, I, I struggle to, when I'm like really busy like this, I can't justify sort of sitting there, stopping the video every two minutes, setting up my, you know, I'm like wasting someone's, <laughs> you know, someone's waiting yeah. for that gear. And I'm, and I, you know, I mean, occasionally I can, you know, I can, I can, you know, do one if I'm, if I'm caught up a little bit, but I'd like to, I'd like to move the YouTube channel up a little bit more. Have you um, ever thought of TikTok as well? Ever thought of what, sorry? Doing TikTok. TikTok? Oh, see, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd do on that. I don't know what I'd do because my, my son watches it and I think it just seems to be people, just people dancing. And I don't know. I, do. I mean, there's one I follow. It's a guy cleaning a pill and you, you watch them and you're like, he's just cleaning a pill, but I yeah, watch what he does. Yeah, but I'm, I'd I'm imagine. Um, yeah. <laughs> my son keeps saying, get on TikTok, get on TikTok. And I'm like, I don't, I, to be honest, I don't really know what to do on TikTok. It's to be honest, it's the truth <laughs> right now. Uh, I know I do need to sort of like move with the times, but mm. I just think, what would I do? I've never, you know, the, you my do. experience is, my, is the stupid videos my son watches constantly. Yeah. And I think, you know, what is this TikTok? You know, it just seems a bit, I don't know. But I mean, I need to get on my Twitter as well because. I don't really, I'm, I'm a bit rubbish on Twitter. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> you probably noticed that my Twitter's pretty rubbish. Um, I, get, I, get, I get a bit like, and I, again, but I think again, it's all, it, it comes to my, my time, you know, it's mm. like it, the more socials I have to do, you know, the less, and I'm also answering messages every night and taking on new jobs and ordering fabric and booking the next job in and, you know, and answering people's messages like, okay, yeah. like you know i can have like 15 20 messages a day now on instagram so it's like um if and, and then i'm doing my instagram then i gotta do twitter and then i'm trying to do my youtube <laughs> it's like you know it's like yeah, there's only so uh, what i don't want i don't want the socials to take away from the the job yeah. you, know, you know, yeah. know what i mean because that's obviously that's the important part is doing the work you know but i, I do I, I, I would like to sort of develop that youtube channel a little bit more yeah so yeah. What, you, what you could do i mean obviously i know it's about time but once you caught up it would be really interesting especially like wrestling fans to kind of create and you know recreate an old wrestling uh attire yeah i mean that would get people viewing it imagine like creating like the old Kane costume or the old Shawn Michaels. Yeah, yeah. I think people, you know, definitely click onto that. Did the British Bulldog? Do you remember when Trent and Tyler did, did the British Bulldog tribute? Mm. And they yeah. wore the British. I made, I made that. I made that. Mm. Them. Okay, that's cool. Hey, that's that was, cool. That was quite. That was quite cool to do that. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, I quite enjoyed doing that. But yeah, I, I'd like to sort of. I'd like to sort of do more sort of videos and stuff with with the rep you know with the guys like getting to come down and film yeah. them in the shot being measured you know yeah like the process you know i mean we could talk while we do it and stuff and you know and maybe even it, like little interview I, i've also i'd like to maybe like do little interviews with them you know because mm -hmm. i'm quite pally you now with quite a lot of wwe so i yeah. think a lot, a lot a lot of people i think a lot of them would 
give me a bit of time, you know what I mean, over yeah. Zoom or, like, you know, to do a little interview. And, you know, I think that'd be quite cool as well to put that on the YouTube. Mm. But, yeah, it's it, it just starts to just come down to time, you know, at the end of the day. Just one of the off subjects. Have you had any interaction with Cesaro? No. <laughs> okay, <that's fine. laughs> he's just I, i'm i'm kind of obsessed with him I, I feel like he should be like the guy and uh yeah <laughs> no not mad but maybe in the future i mean i'm getting more wwe every day so you know <laughs> he does need a I mean, good set of ring gear because he's quite basic in this well you know let's give him a nudge that's uh <laughs> I'll give him a, I'll send him a message after. <laughs> what would give him like make it a bit more like some tassels and stuff? <laughs> some tassels. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll tell him you said tassel. No, no, what no, dog, because I want to meet him. Don't tell him to me <laughs> <laughs> Some fake fur and cat collars. <laughs> yeah, we'll get some cat collars in there. I've still got some left over from the bulk, the bulk batch that I bought. So. <laughs> uh, just so if, and everyone's watching, what is your YouTube channel and your in your socials? Uh, uh, so my Twitter is BCB Designs, and my YouTube is Black Country Beast Designs, and my Instagram is just Black Country Beast. So, yeah, um, I think I've got that right. I hope I have anyway. <laughs> but all my well, socials are in my well, Instagram sort of bit at the back, you know, the description box. So you can see I'm. Yeah, we'll put your um, details on our. Uh, yeah. just page, double yeah. check them because I, I might have got them wrong actually I'm not, I'm not <laughs> great on the social <laughs> the yeah, I, need to, right. I, need to, I need to sort of uh, it's my age you see so I'm too old for all them social yeah no it's, it's been really interesting to kind of get a kind of a, a look at like what happens with the costumes because I had no initial idea what goes on and how yeah. they're made yeah. that's it yeah I, I think I think because what, I mean, what people care about is the wrestling, you know. You know, people want to see the wrestling, don't they? They want to see the... Um, I mean, I, I do... I mean, you get a lot of buzz, you know, when someone comes out, especially if it's a new, something that they've, they've not wore before. You know, I quite like when a WWE goes a bit... goes off what they would normally have. You know, yeah. Trent, Trent and Tyler are good for that. I've met them so many different... different... Um, I've met and I'll be gone again. No, no, you go. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I've made them so many different um, types of, you know, styles, and you know, that's cool. that's cool because you do get a lot of buzz then when you know, you know, oh, I can't believe so and so wore that. You know, oh, it looks mm. so cool. I mean, when Pete came out in the white in the white gear that I made him, you know, with the football, yeah. football thing. I mean, that just, I, you know, that went crazy. My my Instagram went mental with that. Mm. You know, really. Yeah, um, and when I did the Bros Awake stuff, you know, the uh, the Bros Awake with the uh, Stallion P and Stallion Matt coats that I made, that went absolutely crazy. I mean, that was insane when they came out in them, <laughs> you know. So. But, but it's another thing is, like, the wrestling can be spot on, but if the attire is wrong, it can completely yeah. de destroy a wrestler. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, that's right, yeah. And that's why I think it's important you work really closely, you know, and and really make sure that it's looking its best, you know, and it doesn't matter how much work it takes me, it doesn't matter, you know, I'll make sure that everyone is dressed, per, you know, the way they want it, even yeah. I, I, above and beyond. I mean, I have a lot of, a lot of people who, you know, message and say, this is 10 times better than what I, you know, I ever, in, you know, had in my own head. And that's what you want, mm. you know, you want, you want to, take their expectations and then just go once you know go one step more and go beyond the, those expectations you know what i mean and that's when and you and you, and you say it shows up it shows on stage you know in the ring yeah. when someone comes out and you get that response and you you see how they look and you know i mean you know pete just coming out in that white gear you know i couldn't wait for that to to debut you know yeah. I, mean, I, made, I made that so far you know i made that so long, long before that that match you know you're sitting there just waiting you know you've got the photos in your mm -hmm. <laughs> in my in my phone i'm like can't wait for him to come out the second he comes out because i have to wait till like sort of early hours of the morning yeah because it's obviously america 
So I'm like, oh, dreary eyed, you know, so I need to go to bed, but I'm like, no, I'm going to wait for him to come out. And since he comes out, then, you know, you start posting and it's, it makes it all worthwhile, all, all the all the time and, you know, <laughs> the hours and hours of sewing, you know. So. Johnny, final questions, John? Have you ever made anything that you didn't like? Were you of yeah, yeah. There, are, there has been stuff that's not been quite as exciting. Um, mm. Obviously, I won't, I'm not. I can't. I won't name any. <laughs> I won't name mm -hmm. any names because at the end of the day, it's whatever someone wants. But yeah, there, there is sometimes stuff that you just think, you know, okay, I'll, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do it kind of thing. But um, I have kind of, I have kind of, I, I try to please everyone. You see, so I'll say yes to everybody. You know, and I've got to try. I've started to sort of come out of that now. You know, and say, mm, you know, I, I can do it, but you know, you're gonna, you know, it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be this or it's gonna be that. Um, I'm not, I don't pick my jobs. Obviously, I have a list and I work off that list. You know, if everyone gets there eventually. But yeah, there are jobs that are not quite as exciting to do. You know, mm. and uh, um, yeah, I mean, you, you know, you get asked to do, you get asked to do some playing gear, and that that's very, you no, know, that's okay, but. It's just sewing two pieces of fabric together and sending it out. You know, it's yeah. like that's why that's why I like when you know someone comes up with an absolutely insane, you know, design, and you think, yes, <laughs> I know that's going to be that's going to be the that's going to be such a nightmare to do. I don't care, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you know, I don't care. You know, you can see all the problems you're going to have. You can see all the all the time, all the sewing. You think, nah, that, that's that's. Um, I don't know if you saw the uh, the gear I did for Felix Flash. Gives that one is like the pink and blue stripes and, and all the glitter and the sequins and everything and yeah. um, that was that was a nightmare of a job but it, it was just such a it looks so cool when it's done you know yeah. so yeah it's got yeah it's got to be, it's got to be interesting you know because you spend yeah. a lot of hours in there sewing and if it's not an interesting an interesting design it can be a bit of a slog sometimes but you know they still get they're still the same quality and you still get the same effort from me so yeah. <laughs> that's good like i said we'll put all your social media on our uh, instagram and facebook and you, you if you watch you should check out some of his uh, designs because especially some of the pete duns like you said the white one the white pete dunn costume mm. just looks so good it looks mm. it looks yeah it looks incredible oh cool. yeah there's plenty more to come as well. As I say, that my last three jobs have all been WWE, so they'll be debuting soon. So, <laughs> yes, we, we look out for uh, Black Country Beast. Yep, keep keep there. Yeah. We'll keep going. Keep pestering the Rock. Yeah, <laughs> get, everyone, get everyone get everyone to tweet the Rock. <laughs> yeah, we'll get everyone to tweet the Rock. Yeah, <laughs> I want to make I want to make his next gear. Come on, everyone everyone annoy him until he says yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, we'll try and make that happen for you because yeah, yeah that would be that would be awesome. It would definitely would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank yeah, thank you for taking. Obviously, you, you can tell you have a very busy, busy yeah. time. You know, making this costume. So thank you for taking the time out and yeah, speaking to good. us. That's good. Thank you for uh, asking me. Appreciate. It. Yeah, so we'll see some of your designs very shortly, um, and these mystery costumes designs that we, uh, we we're not allowed to know who they are. But yeah, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah, you'll all be seeing them uh, seeing them soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, right. Well, yeah, I want to say thank you from TTP. Uh, you've been Black Country Beast, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, keep an eye on on your socials. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, keep your eyes. There's plenty more to come. Trust yeah. me, there's plenty more to come. <laughs> if you saw my waiting list, you'd know how many there is to come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks very much. See you later. Bye.